Have you ever stood in the skincare aisle thinking glycolic acid, lactic acid, mandelic acid, what even are all these acids and when do I use them? Don't worry, I've got you. Today we are decoding alpha hydroxy acids, also known as AHAs, so you know what to put on your face and body and why. Welcome, I'm Dr. Sam Ellis and I am a board certified dermatologist in Northern California. I created this channel to help you understand your skin and hair and nails and find products that actually work for you. So if you like that type of content, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Alpha hydroxy acids or AHAs can do some really wonderful things in skincare, but I would pick different acids based on what I'm targeting in the skin, whether it's acne, pigmentation, anti-aging. So today I'm not only gonna teach you about the different alpha hydroxy acids, but when to use each one. I'm gonna give you product recommendations and then make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna give you tips on how to use these AHAs best so you don't do more harm than good. Now we are gonna delve into the specific types of alpha hydroxy acids, but really think of AHAs as a skincare category. They are all exfoliating acids. Their main purpose is to break apart the superficial dead skin cells that sit on the top of your skin to reveal brighter, glowier skin. When you use them consistently, they can help smooth texture, fade dark spots, and some alpha hydroxy acids even boost collagen. So they can help with things like fine lines, wrinkles, and crepiness. If you've heard of alpha hydroxy acids, you almost certainly have also heard of beta hydroxy acids, which is just salicylic acid. And the main difference is that alpha hydroxy acids sit on the surface of your skin, whereas beta hydroxy acids have the ability to go into your pores. The last thing I'll say before we get into the specific types of alpha hydroxy acids is whether or not they are safe in pregnancy. I get asked about this a lot. From my perspective as a dermatologist and what I tell my patients is that I am okay with them using alpha hydroxy acids when trying to get pregnant, when pregnant, and when breastfeeding. You always need to consult with your own healthcare professional, but a lot of patients are interested in what they can be doing for hyperpigmentation and rejuvenation during that time in their life, and I'm okay with AHAs. Let's start off with glycolic acid. This is the AHA that I think people are the most familiar with, and it's probably because it's the most powerful. It is the smallest molecule, so it can get the deepest into the skin, so it can have the most potent exfoliating effects. I love glycolic acid. It increases cell turnover. It helps with collagen production. It's also a human so it helps draw water to the skin surface, and it can also help with things like hyperpigmentation and pore size. Glycolic acid technically can be used by all skin types, but because it is the most potent, the most likely to cause irritation, now this also depends on how it's formulated and what concentration it's at, I really like glycolic acid the most for people who have normal to oily skin. It's also great for mature skin and excellent if you have crepey skin and you're trying to improve skin texture. With all AHAs, but particularly with glycolic acid, because it does have that potential to be more irritating, you're gonna wanna start off using it no more than one to two times a week. That's for face and also for body. Because glycolic acid is the most powerful of the alpha hydroxy acids, it's generally going to yield the most impressive results. But if your skin can't tolerate it, that's when I'll talk about the other alpha hydroxy acids which you can incorporate into your routine instead. When it comes to glycolic acid products, there are so many different kinds out there. There are serums, toners, lotions, and which glycolic acid product you choose kind of depends on where you want to incorporate glycolic acid into your routine. I love our prequel multi-acid milk peel. It's 15% glycolic acid, and then it also contains a few other alpha hydroxy acids, but it also contains squalane, which helps it be more moisturizing and barrier supportive. So it allows you to tolerate a high potency of glycolic acid without irritation. I also like that it's only $23 and it comes in a huge bottle so you can use it on your face and your body and not feel guilty about it. Another glycolic acid product I really like, and it's actually a newer launch from the brand Cyclar. It's their 10% glycolic acid spray. And I think it's just so genius to put it in a spray form because glycolic acid can help with bumpiness, it can make the skin more smooth, it can make it less crepey. Having an easy way to distribute it over your body is genius. And so this one is just like a super easy spray. It's great for your back if you have hyperpigmentation, just a different way to incorporate it into your routine. If you have more sensitive skin, for example, if you have eczema or rosacea or psoriasis or just really reactive skin, sometimes glycolic acid in any of its forms is going to be too much which brings me to lactic acid. Compared to glycolic acid, lactic acid is a larger molecule. It doesn't penetrate as deeply into the skin, and so it offers more gentle exfoliation. Just like glycolic acid, lactic acid can help with things like hyperpigmentation, irregular skin texture, and also lactic acid is really hydrating. So if you find that your skin leans 
dry, you may wanna try a lactic acid preparation. If you deal with bumpy skin on your upper arms, also known as keratosis pilaris, there's a chance at some point in your life someone has recommended amlactin lotion to you, and that's lactic acid in lotion. Now, even though I like amlactin for your body, aside from the kind of nasty smell, and that's very personal, when it comes to face, I don't really like a lactic acid lotion. I prefer it in serum form. Peach and Lily makes a super nice, relatively affordable lactic acid serum, and it also has a ton of peptides in it. So if you're looking for something to gently exfoliate, but also give you like a peptide step in your routine, maybe you're trying to streamline a little bit, highly recommend. So we've got glycolic acid sitting as sort of like the head honcho of the alpha hydroxy acids. You drop it down in intensity to lactic acid if your skin is more dry or sensitive. And then if you need something even more gentle, and especially if you are acne prone because this acid is antimicrobial, we arrive at mandelic acid. Mandelic acid is even larger than lactic acid, so it's not gonna penetrate as deeply, it's going to penetrate more slowly, it's still going to exfoliate, but it's very, very gentle. Mandelic acid is actually my favorite of the alpha hydroxy acids when it comes to treating acne prone skin or people who are struggling with post acne marks like redness or hyperpigmentation. I feel like a lot of times when people have acne, they think, oh, I need to exfoliate really aggressively, I really gotta get into those pores and clean them out, but actually doing really gentle exfoliation on a regular basis with something like mandelic acid can actually lead to more improvement and less overall redness and inflammation. I've talked about this on my channel before, I love the 8% mandelic acid serum from Sophie Pavitt. It's gentle enough for most people to use every day, though I would probably start out using it every third day and work your way up. And then the last alpha hydroxy acids I'll talk about today before I give you the tips and tricks on how to use them properly are malic acid and tartaric acid. Now these are so gentle that it's very rare to find a product that is exclusively dedicated to those acids. They often sort of serve a supporting role. So you will find them in blends with other alpha hydroxy acids. Once you've decided you're going to start incorporating alpha hydroxy acids into your routine, it can be really exciting. And sometimes people wanna go in and use them every single day, but that's not the way to do it. So I'm gonna give you a couple tips and tricks so you can have the most success and get the best skin possible from incorporating these into your routine. Number one, you're always gonna do a little patch test. I recommend taking the acid that you plan on using on your face and putting it kind of in the crook of your elbow. And I would do that every other day for like a week just to make sure it doesn't cause too much irritation or redness. Because if it inflames the inside of your elbow, you don't wanna put it on your face. Also, we're gonna start slow here, so we're gonna start off by incorporating any acid one time a week. Do that for a couple weeks. If there's no issues, go up to a couple times a week, and often you don't need to push it beyond that, especially for glycolic and lactic acid. If you're using something more gentle like Mendelic, using that every other day or even every day may work for you. The other reminder I want to give you here is these are all exfoliants. They are meant to strip off those outer dead skin cell layers, but eventually you don't have much of a dead skin cell layer there, so if you keep applying your acid too aggressively, you're gonna start breaking down your very important skin barrier, which is what keeps your skin looking and feeling healthy. So it's really important that when you're incorporating exfoliation into your routine, they are also going in and moisturizing every day, maybe thinking about incorporating a hydrating serum. You just wanna really nourish your skin and replenish it when you are exfoliating. So when you go to apply your exfoliant, and whether that's in the morning or at night, doesn't matter, you wanna make sure you're applying it to clean skin and then following it up with moisturizing and hydrating products. I usually recommend that on the day that you're using your acid, you skip your retinoid because retinoids can also be irritating to your skin, but some people will be able to tolerate them in the same routine, and if you can, that's awesome. And the last tip I have for you when incorporating alpha hydroxy acids, and this is so important, is that you protect your skin from the sun. Alpha hydroxy acids, no matter if it's a really potent glycolic acid or a really gentle mandelic acid, make your skin more sun sensitive. So it is so key that if you are using an exfoliant to make your skin better, that you're not undoing that progress by letting your skin get sunburned. And I would say this is particularly important if you have a deeper skin tone because excess sun exposure not only leads to sunburn in that case, but it can also cause hyperpigmentation. And many people are using alpha hydroxy acids to help with hyperpigmentation. So you don't wanna inhibit your progress by getting excess sun exposure. So sunscreen every day, wide brim hats, do your best.
One thing to note though, is that enhanced sensitivity to the sun goes away after about a week of stopping your alpha hydroxy acids. So if I have a patient who's going to go on a very sunny vacation and they maybe are not the best with their sun protection, I'll have them stop any of their alpha hydroxy acid body lotions or face products a week prior to vacation. Hopefully after watching this video, you have a better understanding of alpha hydroxy acids and how to choose the right one for your skin type. If you're already using an alpha hydroxy acid in your routine and you love it, tell us which one you're using. We want to know. I always love to see your product recommendations. Don't forget to like this video and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and I'll catch you next time.